thank Ambassador Gold for her wonderful and very encouraging words um, about AFS. And uh, as she was talking, and especially this past uh, round of, of, of questions, uh, I hope that they will continue partnering with us. <laughs> um, I see that uh, I'm not surprised. We have a very passionate audience. Um, I will go a little bit off what I'm going to, to talk, but I, I, I personally thought that the most of the questions that you raised are very important, and that you should know that we are um, on top of many of them, and as concerned as many of you are. And uh, Ambassador Galt, of course, as she said, she's, she's new to, to, to her position at ECA. But for instance, I heard, I think from there, concerns about the effect of the F1 program on, on our uh, J1 program. This is something that we have brought up to uh, ECA a, a couple of years ago already. Um, but uh, what we have to understand, as frustrating as it may be for all of us, is that the fact that J1 is under um, the Department of State, or is regulated by the Department of State, and F1 is under Homeland Security, um, it makes it a little bit complicated. You know, from a government perspective, being two very different uh, areas of government trying to put those two together and coordinate uh, is, is challenging. But we do recognize uh, that, that in some parts of the country, because it's not, the effect is not alike uh, all over yet, um, but we do know for a fact and I think that the volunteer that raised the question was, or is from California, right? Yes. Southern California. We do know for a fact that in California is having a huge impact. And uh, while they are not com direct competitors in the sense of other exchange organizations doing it, it ends up being a competitor of what we do because of the effects of it, especially not only with the schools, but in a community, when families start finding out and realizing that they can receive a thousand dollars, sometimes more, a month for hosting uh, a foreign student, then and I am sure, and I have heard this from AFS volunteers uh, in California, particularly in the LA area, um, just, just, just to give you an example, because I found this very revealing and very interesting. In January, I was having a meeting, a webinar, with the leadership of uh, the, the greater LA team, AFS team volunteers there. And they were telling me that the past hosting season, they had 100 family leads in the LA area that came to them wanting to host, but all of them expected to be paid. And needless to say, the hundred families walked away. And the greater LA team ended up hosting seven students. So clearly, you know, they're, they're they're, they're in some parts of, of the country, this is having a big, big impact on, on what we do, and it's affecting you know, the exchanges. So I, 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 I went, again, a little bit off my, my, my script here, but I, I thought that some of the questions that came up um, are very important, and that I want you to know that we are on top of them as concerned as you are, I'm trying to do as an organization the best that we can do. And not only alone, we also partner with other exchange organizations that experience the same challenges. 
you know, because I think that I don't need to explain to you, the J-1 program is part of the public diplomacy of the U.S. government. F-1 is basically buying education in the United States. So it, the, the concept is completely different. And we want to preserve as much as possible the public diplomacy uh, aspect of the program. I think that most of you know I am a product of that. <laughs> I came from Argentina, gosh, almost 40 years ago, um, on, 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 on this program, on the J-1 program. So I, I can speak, as many of you can also, uh, the, the value and the importance and the effect that it has, not only on the participants themselves, but all the people that we touch, our host families, our schools, you know, the friends that we make, and, and, and the famous multiplier effect that, that we talk so much about. So, sorry that I, I, I felt that I, I, I needed to, to say a few words um, about that. Um, but once again, you know, welcome everyone. Um, I'm, I'm very happy that um, the crowd is getting bigger because last night it was just our, uh, mainly our, our uh, AFS partners from abroad and alumni. Now we have also our, our own volunteers. Um, I, I always come to this, to this event, except for last year that I had another, another commitment. But this year, as we know, is, is very special because we are celebrating the 15th anniversary of the YES program. And, uh, and I want to, to, to welcome and thank all of you who uh, make all of this uh, possible. And that is to our AFS volunteers, to our international partners, to the YES alumni, you stood up with, with Ambassador Gauls, uh, the CDYX alumni, the NSLIY <laughs> alumni, the AFS staff from sponsor programs and others, and also the other placement uh, organizations that we work with, IRIS, Youth for Understanding, AIFS, and PAX. So all of you uh, make this uh, possible, and uh, I just want to, to thank all of you for, for everything that you do in each one of, of your roles. Um, AFS USA, or I should say the American Field Service, has been partnering and working together with the Department of State from day one for over 70 years. So for us, the partnership with the Department of State and more particularly with ECA is, is very important and I would say that it's part of our DNA. Um, and, and in this very long history of partnering with the Department of State, um, our longest running program at this moment is CBYX. We have been running it since 1983 and AFS USA has been one of the founding organizations of that program. And uh, I have some figures here that are very, very revealing of the impact that these programs have. Um, for instance, 24,000 students have taken part in the CBYX program between the United States and Germany. That's quite a number. Um, just between AFS USA and AFS Germany, we have recruited and hosted over 3,600 participants of all those. As Ambassador Galt mentioned, AFS USA was also a founding organization of the YES program along with other partners and the recruitment organizations that we work with, IRIS, Amidist, and IERN, 
for this. Um, so AFS in the United States has, has a history of being pioneer in many ways. And I think that we should all feel proud of that. And no matter the challenges that we may be facing today, you know, the F1, the effect of the, the, the politics, the changing politics, not only here in the US, but also around the world, the unfortunate school shootings that are having, you know, a negative effect in, in, in what we do, let's not give up, you know. Let's keep, you know, fighting for what we believe and for what we know is good for, for all of us, for the US and for the world. Um, I also want to recognize the other placement organizations that we work with. IUSA, CIEE, ASSE, ASPECT, AIFS, and also PAX. And uh, I, I, I made reference to it um, last night and, and here again, and Ambassador Galt also referenced I also want to, to, to recognize to those organizations um, who took plunge into the dark at the time. And that was not only AFS USA and the other founding organizations, but also the four AFS partners that stood up uh, uh, just, just recently and, and started the program. I hope I'm not forgetting anyone, but it's Egypt, Indonesia, um, Turkey and Malaysia. Thank you. So big applause for all of them. Um, over the past 15 years, you know, these, these numbers are, are really incredible. Over the past 15 years, the YES program has recruited almost 10,000 students including the current participants that we have on, on, on program. And we have a, a, a little bit over 9,500 um, alumni currently from, from that program. And AFS alone has recruited 3,700 students of which we have posted here in the US approximately uh, 1,200. So these are not just numbers. These, these are human beings, these are individuals that, as I said before, touch many other lives. And lately, not only in AFS, but in many uh, other uh, not-for-profit organizations, uh, we talk about impact, you know? What, what is the impact of what we do as an organization. And that is the hardest thing to measure, you know, because it's not as easy as saying, oh, 100 went to this program, 50 on this other one. But what, what has been that impact? And when you see these numbers in the thousands, just with, with one program that we run, you can imagine you can multiply several times with the, the people that they touch, the families that host them, the, the classmates that, that they touch when they go to school, the friends that they make, um, and how also it impacts their own families at home, their own friends and the, the, their own people. So I hope that that, that we keep that um, in mind. And uh, when we feel, you know, challenged, or we feel that, oh my God, this is becoming too difficult to deal with, as some of the, the cases that, that, that we heard tonight, let's think about, you know, what we are contributing with by allowing these, these young students to have this transformational experience that we offer and that we know how to uh, administer or manage so well you know, 
in our 70 years plus of, of experience. So once again, uh, thank you. Thank you very much to all of you, volunteers, staff, other organizations, alumni, everyone for, for, for believing in what you do and uh, for bringing forward that belief in, in what you do in order to give this wonderful opportunity to so many others, not only here in the United States, but around the world. So thank you very much, and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the, of the workshop, okay? Thank you. Thank you again, Jorge, for uh, your speech. You're welcome. And, uh, and yes, 